Okay. <clears throat> Good morning, still everybody. Uh, it's uh, nice to be here with the OpenStreetMap community. I'm not really belonging to that world. Uh, I'm coming from a bit, slightly bit different world from the Inspire world. You probably heard all about Inspire, which stands for Infrastructure for Spatial Information in Europe. So it's more on public data and data coming from, at most, from national mapping agencies. Uh, however, I'm not working in National Mapping Agency, I'm working in the European Commission in the Joint Research, Research Center, um, which is very close basically here to Milano. We are situated in Ispra on, on Lago Maggiore, uh, which is some 50 kilometers uh, from here. Uh, let me first introduce my co-authors on this paper. So these are my colleagues from uh, GRC, Alexander Kotsev, uh, Michael Lutz and Robert Thomas. Um, uh, we also have some contribution from Eurostat, uh, where our colleague Hannes Reuter, who is mainly dealing with the mapping in the Eurostat. And then we have several examples here uh, coming basically from some kind of collaboration between OpenStreetMap uh, as a volunteered map project and basically national mapping agency. So one example is, sorry, uh, one example is uh, from Spain. Uh, from uh, National Geographic Institute, and the other example is from the Institute for uh, on Territorial System for Innovation, uh, colleagues coming from uh, Torino uh, here in uh, Italy. What to say about the GRC? Uh, so GRC is basically one of the Directorate Generals of the European Commission. Uh, GRC is spread around several countries, so the biggest part of GRC is uh, here in Italy, in Ispra, as I said, on the Lake uh, Maggiore. And uh, if you look for it on the Google Maps, you will get something like that. But if you go on the open street map, then you will have a completely different uh, figure. Uh, okay, the area where we are working uh, was the previous nuclear power plant, so it's uh, really secured around. There is a great fence and security guards on the entrance and so on and so on. But uh, still, it seems there are a living open street map community uh, also working uh, in the GRC. Okay, so uh, an outline um, of what I will speak in this 15 minutes or so. Uh, I will mention GISCO, which stands for GIS for the European Commission, uh, which is run uh, by Eurostat. Then uh, very briefly, very shortly about the Inspire. Uh, as I said, I, I think probably you are all familiar with the Inspire, or at least you heard about it. And then I will try to give you some examples of, of how basically OpenStreetMap and Inspire are fitting uh, fitting together. Um, GISCO, uh, as I said, it stands for GIS for the European Commission. Uh, basically, it's led uh, by the uh, Director General Eurostat. Uh, what is GISCO doing? So, there are a lot of needs on the European Commission level uh, for the spatial data. So, basically, in all many policies, you need to have uh, special data and to use them uh, as a as support, but also for the evidence in, 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 in uh, implementation and monitoring of the European policies. Uh, this is also the, somehow the role, the main role of the Joint Research Center where I'm coming from, because what we are doing there, we are doing uh, scientific support to policy. So basically from planning and policy, uh, through implementation and then later monitoring of the policy and, and uh, evaluation. So GISCO is providing uh, uh, basic services for the Commission, which means geographical data but also statistical data, obviously, because it's run by the Eurostat. And um, uh, they are using um, several type of services, uh, mostly these uh, web tools, which are available for the people who are working for the European Commission, but also in the agencies and other European, uh, European institutions. Inspire. 2007, Inspire, let's say, baby was born. And at that time, Nokia already sold out 15 million of this well-recognized and well-known uh, seller of phone. What is INSPIRE? INSPIRE is a piece of legislation. It's a European regulation. It's a framework directive, which concerns, of course, uh, European member states. And basically, the goal of this uh, directive is uh, to establish an infrastructure for spatial information in Europe. 
It is based on the national spatial data infrastructures, and it is based on public data or data coming from, from public authority. So Inspire, when it was designed, let's say, uh, some 10 years or even more ago, 15 years ago. It didn't concern at this time volunteer geographic information, also neither, neither um, private data coming from private companies. So it is clearly and strictly focused basically on the uh, data from public authority, mostly from National Mapping Agency, but many other public authorities because the widespread of data teams in Inspire uh, cover really uh, big, big, uh, big, big, big areas. Um, Inspire GRC, I already mentioned um, that the GRC is involved in the support to policy making. And GRC was involved from starting from the beginning of Inspire, so from drafting, which started, let's say, in 2000, 2001. And uh, what we are doing right now, we are still technical coordinator of the Inspire Directive. Um, we are also providing tools, different type of tools for validation, testing of the infrastructure, access to member states' geoportals through central access point, which is Inspire Geoportal, and also contribution to availability of different type of priority data sets, which are of interest uh, of the Commission. We are also um, supporting so-called maintenance and implementation framework, uh, so basically uh, discussing uh, and taking uh, common ac actions basically with the people from the member states, uh, with the experts and so on, I with the goal to establish uh, the European infrastructure. So this is a kind of a roadmap of, of the Inspire. So it started, as I said, baby was born in 2007, with the legislation and then transposition period for the member states and um, with the drafting of guidelines and, and, and data models. And right now, basically, we are still in the phase of the implementation. So the work is still not uh, done. And uh, basically, the, 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 the some kind of foreseen date of, of the uh, infrastructure to be fully established is 2020 or 2021, uh, we can say. And of course, after that, I mean, Inspire is a process, so it will not stop for sure at 2020, but it will continue to develop. So there will be a phase of, of, of maintenance and, and evolution. Uh, what's the state of play right now? So these are some numbers coming from official Inspire dashboard, uh, where you can see basically the number of metadata records um, from the member states, sorry. Uh, so there are more than 100,000 metadata records, and there are, you can see also many, many uh, different special data services, uh, especially for view uh, and download. And of course, there, there is more uh, uh, also available on the, on the national, uh, national level. But when you compare this figure with this one, then it's a nice phenomenon that at the same time, uh, starting there from 2007 up to today, we have also a huge increase of, of, of the uh, OpenStreetMap registered users. So it seems that in a parallel way, from one point, Inspire was pushing, let's say, public authorities and so-called authoritative data to become available for reuse for different purposes. And on the, on the same time, basically, we have a huge increase of the data coming from volunteers. And this is something which needs, needs for sure to be, to be concerned. So let me show you a few examples where OpenStreetMap uh, is used and how it, work, uh, how it works together uh, with basically public and authoritative data. I already mentioned GISCO, uh, which is providing services for the Commission. And basically, uh, GISCO and Eurostat is using heavily OpenStreetMap as a background map for different type of services. Um, you can see some um, information about what is used and how it's used. It is interesting, basically, to stress that uh, OpenStreetMap is used at the commission level. The reason why it's uh, such a case is uh, basically that the data, public data, authoritative data coming from member states are still not really available. So this is the main reason, and uh, basically we are trying to fight uh, with the member states, with the national agencies, and so on and so on, to provide, to provide the data. So, as I said, Inspire is still in the implementation phase, and uh, hopefully um, we will have all those data uh, 
on the roadmap till 2020. But it's still some time uh, to, to, to go to, to, to be happen. Um, by using OpenStreetMap, of course, uh, European Commission needs to be politically correct. So um, there, what they are doing, basically they are taking OpenStreetMap and then um, they need also to implement, let's say, the political position of the European Commission. So basically, when we are talking, for example, about disputed areas, um, there need to be solution of how to really show it, because every document which is published by the European Commission needs to be politically correct. So basically, there are a few examples of what they are doing in Eurostat. So they are trying, so basically, to correct somehow in a political way um, uh, data coming from the open street map. So you have here, for examples of Crimea uh, in Ukraine and then uh, Kosovo and also Macedonia, where, for example, the name of Macedonia cannot be used in official documents, but the former Yugoslav Republic of Macedonia and so on and so on. So this is the type and this is the background map then which is corrected and which the people uh, working in European Commission can, uh, can use. Another example is from the National Geographical Institute from Spain. What they are doing, they have a collaboration with OpenStreetMap and basically they are providing data from their national transport network database, which is based on the Inspire data models. And together with the OpenStreetMap, basically they are improving the content uh, on both sides, on, on, on both, uh, both ends. And the collaboration is very successful. And basically, this um, National Geographical Institute of Spain, together with many others um, uh, contributors from Spain, uh, is listed, of course, in the OpenStreetMap. And they are very happy about, uh, about this mutual uh, collaboration. Another example we had a few years ago, uh, one pilot project, uh, which was uh, contracted basically for this uh, institute from Torino, which I mentioned, city. Um, what uh, they were trying to develop uh, is uh, some kind of combination of uh, cultural heritage and hazards in the Danube, reg in the Danube re region. So the project was uh, aimed to support uh, uh, Danube strategy. And uh, it was quite a challenged project uh, because it uh, took 14 countries and some of them are member states, some of them are not member states. So basically they use different uh, data sources uh, for, this, uh, for this project. You can see um, uh, sources uh, up for the natural hazards, but then also sources for cultural heritage. And one of the source was also OpenStreetMap uh, uh, for the cultural uh, heritage. What they found out uh, in this project is that uh, data as a such um, are hosted in uh, OpenStreetMap in uh, many different categories. So it was not really easy to extract the data about uh, cultural heritage. So it, it, it's in many, many different areas such as buildings, transport, land use, waterways, um, and so on and so on. So this was the result uh, of the project. So basically, they were trying to assess hazards uh, regarding to natural disasters uh, for, uh, for the cultural, uh, cultural heritage. Uh, some kind of follow-up of this project is the Riscalt uh, project right now, where basically a city uh, institute continued uh, activities. And this is now an international best practice uh, project uh, on cultural, cultural heritage which, if you are interested, you can find more on the project, uh, project uh, web, web page. Um, some findings from the project, uh, what I mentioned, uh, basically what they found good for, for the OpenStreetMap and what may be not so good or weak. Uh, so there are many strengths. Uh, first of all, data are already cataloged, georeferenced, ready to be downloaded, of course, for free. Data are constantly updated data free, as I said, so there is no economic effort required for database maintenance and update, and data are easily accessible. On the other hand, weaknesses, um, data on cultural heritage, as I mentioned already, are spread across different categories, so it's not easy to find uh, what you are looking for. Um, data are often also not coherent, so um, with some international standards on cultural heritage, for example, set by UNESCO or 
other national national standards. Uh, there is no veri verification and validation applied uh, to, da to data that consequently cannot be used by emergency operators uh, or local authorities to deal with natural hazards, risk prevention, and reported data are not collected, tailored, or structured on the basis of emergency operators' needs. So this is let's say, some kind of the conclusion from the City Institute, what they found out by using uh, OpenStreetMap. So this comes us with some conclusions. So basically what we can conclude uh, from these examples and uh, from these uh, slides, so um, in many times when, I don't know, if you go to Euro Geographics Conference, which is an organization umbrella of national mapping agencies in Europe, uh, covering not only member states but the broad Europe, uh, there are always discussion. So, what is is, is OpenStreetMap uh, basically a threat to them, or is it an opportunity? And how they see uh, on on that? So, I think from from this example that I showed you, I mean, it is it is clear more or less that for sure it is not a threat, that it's a big opportunity. And uh, from our point of view, the boat. Basically, the boat infrastructure, if we can call it, and I'm sure I can, we can call OpenStreetMap also as an infrastructure, but based on the volunteer geographic information, should be complementary. So should be mutually used um, to find and to achieve synergies. And this is already happening. So as I mentioned, you saw it from the, in the example of Spain. But there are also around Europe uh, other examples where basically national mapping agencies or providers of authoritative data are also using uh, OpenStreetMap uh, data, so, so the data coming, uh, coming from the OpenStreetMap uh, community. And I think message is clear, so it, 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 it is maybe to, to, to see how this should be even, uh, this connection should be strengthened uh, for the future, uh, for the future work, because it's obvious that the amount of data which is coming from the volunteer geographic uh, uh, information community is bigger and bigger, and obviously mapping agencies, they cannot uh, follow this. So, of course, they need to change their business models and to adapt uh, some changes in their everyday, everyday work. Um, before I'm ending, uh, just a, a few notifications, or I wouldn't say it, advertisement. Uh, there is ongoing SAFE call, which is uh, connecting European facility. And um, basically there, um, it's very interesting because it's, on, it's an opportunity for funding for uh, big, let's say, pan-European uh, data sets. Uh, and especially in the point two, uh, it's called for the provision and generation of spatial data. So harmonized thematic open data sets. In, in particular, uh, geospatial data. So I think this could be a nice opportunity, maybe also for, the, uh, for this community, for the OpenStreetMap community, to see how it can be further explored. I think the minimum requirement is that you have five countries on board, so um, at least. And, of course, if you have more countries which in a cross-border, it, it could be something which can be used to maybe improve uh, uh, OpenStreetMap, at least in Europe. Uh, the another announcement uh, is uh, also that uh, we are annually organizing Inspire Conference. Uh, and this year it will be in Antwerpen. Usually we have uh, some presentation there from OpenStreetMap community, and it's always nice to see how, as I said, these this two infrastructure are basically merging and, and, and getting uh, together. So thank you very much for your attention. And of course, questions are welcome. Thank you, sir. I have um, two quick uh, questions. First, about the, granular the granularity of uh, what is allowed at the EU level. Uh, your data is categorized in NUTS 1, NUTS 2, NUTS 3, usually. 
Uh, is it possible to go below not so three? Do you know about the rules uh, for that? And my second question is about the, um, the data sets that the EU Commission uh, is providing, which is usually incomplete. And what I've seen myself is that there's a lot of holes and a lack of, again, of local granularity. Usually the data is at the country level. For example, when you want to tap into DEFCO, into NIR, uh, into ECO data, uh, it's always at country level and never at the provincial or at the district level, which makes it very difficult to use it uh, for GIS uh, studies. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> Thank you for the question. So on the first one, regarding the levels, um, the, probably the question should be addressed to Eurostat directly because they are dealing, they have an agreement uh, with OpenStreetMap on what and how they are, how they are using. I would say probably it's possible, but I'm not 100% sure, so the right address would be Hannes Reuter from Eurostat to address. Uh, regarding the second question, yeah, uh, you are absolutely right. Inspire is basically not only on the national level, but there are many local. So if you go to Inspire Geo Portal and searching for the data for some country, um, uh, there is um, probability very high that you will find a lot of local data sets, regional, or whatever, and that then you will have to combine it somehow. And it's still a bit difficult to do so because uh, the data sets are usually not harmonized. So, and that's why I said the implementation uh, period is still now. So basically we are pushing member states at least to harmonize the data. And in Inspire you have these three annexes, probably you are familiar with this. And deadline for Annex 1 already passed, but still the data are not available in a harmonized way. Uh, we as a GRC cannot do much, so the policy master is DG Environment, basically who is pushing the member states to, to provide data as soon as possible. So I, I hope with some political will that the situation will, uh, will improve, but let's see. Thanks. Hi, two quick questions. So your data model, is it open? And um, can we essentially see how it looks like? Uh, can you repeat, please? The data model. Yes. Is it open and can we see um, how it looks like? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So all, all Inspire data models are open fully. So if you go to Inspire web page, you can find schema, schemas, you can download it, and you can immediately use it. Thank you. And the second question is the data availability. Uh, are you trying to make it available across the board and is it under which license? So Creative Commons or? That's, that's a good point uh, again. Uh, so uh, basically the Inspire is not uh, putting regulatory ob obligations on the data licensing. So basically it's on the countries. What we recommended is to use some kind of so-called Inspire licenses, which are close to the one uh, uh, that you have mentioned. But we are just now running a study across the Europe to see um, what is going on. And the first findings from the study are already showing us that there are many different licensing models. So starting from some organizational licenses and then to some open uh, licenses and so on and so on. So for sure, the, the situation should be harmonized in that field as well. Thank you. Any other questions? No more questions. So we can prepare the next uh, session. Thank you.